Hi, it's Jamie with Jamie's Art Tell Cards. Thank you very much for joining me. I have a fun project planned for us today. I hope this video inspires you to create something of your own. If you would, hit the like button and share the video with your friends. That helps me to grow this channel and to continue to bring you new projects. If you haven't subscribed yet, would you please consider subscribing? And if you have, thank you very much. Well, we have a lot to do, so let's get to it. Hi, it's Jamie with Jamie's Art Seller Cards. Thank you so much for joining me today. I have a special request to go over some uh, tips for sewing. So I uh, found this uh, sweet little project uh, where we'll make a picture book out of fabric. So we'll, um, we've got this uh, blocking here, right, with the pictures on it. We'll cut those out. This is actually two books together, so it'll be half half of these panels. And then once I get it cut out, I have to decide, do I want to use white square felts? Uh, I think this batting will be too bulky. Uh, or do I want to use muslin? Or even maybe some, some uh, interfacing. We'll see uh, exactly what I think. I'm leaning towards the the, the felt so because it'll give it body uh, and it's a size where I think would give um, ability to have like that edge free because in books that I've made in the past it gets real bulky right here so I think that this would help so where we'll start is uh, getting everything cut out. to literally let's see not sure why they put these on here I mean I know about the register and all but All right, so we have, if we sew this to there, that's what it looks like, like this, nope. It's a little more narrow than I would like it to be. numbers so that's why you keep your directions so we have one and ten we need one and ten which should be from the first group 
So I'm just trying to decide this, the design at this point. And all the numbers are here at the bottom. So that's how you keep track of that. So if we did something like that, it would be an easy, but it's, so then as we sew all the things together, that still might be okay. I'm gonna pin it together and see what happens. After fiddling uh, with this a little bit, I decided to go with that fusible uh, interfacing. So I'm going to go ahead and iron all the pieces to the, the, the webbing and then let it cool down and then do my pinking uh, shears on there and then start sewing. I think this will be the easiest, quickest way and uh, combat that bulk that I'm worried about. All right, so I'm going to use my little mini Cricut and it's up to temp. It just went off. So I'm just going to help the diffuse on there. I do have my mats underneath. I'm not terribly worried about the heat because I have it on the lowest setting that it can go. Then it, the reason I ended up going with this versus the other was because of this fancy little uh, outer outer edge. Uh, it was going to be really hard to try to line up every edge uh, everywhere that um, it that it appears. So I thought this would be the least problematic way. And I want this to be more about sewing than design. But I want to have a cute end product at the same time. All right, we're about to see if this temp is warm enough. I can go up two more levels. And it doesn't quite stick, so I'm going to let it go back up one. And once it comes up to temp, then we'll go ahead and press this down.
actually took my scissors to the sharpener, scissor sharpener person, and got them sharpened last fall. So once these have had a chance to cool well, I'll go ahead and uh, use a pinking to go around the edge, helping to keep from fraying. Instructions recommend that. Sounds like a good idea, like just outside here on the white, because I want to sew right on the blue so I can keep all the decoration. All right, let's see how we did. Much better. Okay. All right, we'll let everything cool down and then we'll see where we're at. Once I take the pink and shears to them, if I need to um, press, I'll do that on the back. But it takes it from just fabric to, it's pretty stiff, so that's nice. All right, the mat will go down. <laughs> All right, let's let it cool down and then we can go to our next step. All right, we've got them all ironed, they're cooled down, they're uh, put together very well. So now I'm going to take my pinking shears and I'm just going to do uh, this little zigzag cut around the edge and that will help uh, prevent fraying. So I've received a special request uh, asking how to thread this automatic threader needle, right? So I'm going to try to get you in here where you can see it. I'm still going to follow all these little directional arrows that tell me how to thread down and through. So basically it comes from the bobber around here, down through here catches come up through here and see that thing moves when you're when your wheels turning that's moving right so it catches it bring it down here and then there's the little threading device so for this machine you pull this down bring your thread to the front of that needle and to that right little hook and then when you let this go, boom, shakalaka, it um, threads automatically for you. All right, so I want to thread this manually just in case. I have an automatic threader, but you may not have an automatic threader. So basically, there's a little hole in the needle, and I've followed my machine all the directions. So basically, I just want to put this thread through the hole. You know, I like the automatic threader. <laughs> See where it's all been done. So you get it you through the back. So now I'm going to pull it. And what I want to do is I want to put it uh, underneath in this little gap on the foot so that I can actually pull my bobbin thread forward. And there it is. So now I've got the top stitch, which is what came from the top, and the bottom stitch ready. So we are ready to start sewing. All right, so uh, after sleeping on this, uh, thinking about it, all the different things I could do to save this project, uh, 
a famous country song. You have to know when to fold them. <laughs> so I am going to uh, scratch this idea because it is just, you just can't come back from how, I don't know how to come back from how this was printed at such a skew. So what I'm going to do, a uh, particular person I'm going to give this to loves little mini pillows. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually cut just outside the white and then sew along the white and make these into stinking cute little pillows. And then before I cut up that next set, I'll figure out something else. <laughs> but that's what we're going to do with this. I wanted this to be a sewing tutorial, not a, oh my gosh, how do I fix this flaw design? Um, <clears throat> this design flaw. So I'm going to go ahead and cut these out and uh, I'm going to pin them and show you just a real simple how to make a real simple pillow. Uh, and I think they'll be really cute. Uh, they will hold up well since I put that uh, facing on the back so it's a little bit thicker. I'm not going to rick rack them because I think it will not um, ravel. <clears throat> the way that I'm going to do it now. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and just cut these out and then we'll get to sewing and then I'll try to uh, make sure you have that close up where you can see what I'm doing over there on the machine. But let me get us to that point so that we can actually do that. Start with a simple one. These are lined up pretty well. So let's, uh, I'm going to line up this little white line with the inside of my foot. That's going to help me uh, keep a straight line. Something like that. Just going slow till I get my rhythm. Reverse the corner. And I want to get it to where it's the same. So I can go like maybe one or two more stitches. And so I'm lining it up, this white line, the inside of that opening on that foot. So I just want to give it maybe another stitch. Yes. Actually, that's too much. So let's go back one. us back where yes all right
going to, again, we're going to leave room for our hand so we can stuff it. So we only want to go to about there. All right. Let's see how we did with our first one. white 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 and white okay we did it all right we'll turn them all at one time oh, i just moved it okay Actually, did I catch it? No, I didn't. Let's start it here and do it around the corner like we did last time. It worked well. See how we did here. These look good, also. So let's match up our corners. I'm going to get one that's not from the skewed pack. So here we go corner to corner. Takes us corner to corner. Corner a little bit big. Let's see. Put that straight on. So we're going to leave that alone. Okay. Let me move you back over to the other side where you can see overhead. All right. So we're going to turn our little pillows right side out and then we're going to stuff them. So I'm just going to gently work one corner at a time out. Hopefully I don't wrinkle them up too much. I could press them before I stuff them, but we'll see if we need to do that. So I'm just working my way to that opposite corner. All right, and as I get As I get over here, then I'm just going to let's see if I should have trimmed those, but maybe not. Hoping I didn't need to. Okay. Sometimes when you only have fiber fill in the corners of a pillow in particular, um, it 
kind of lose their cornerness, right? Their pointy part. So let's see. I wanted to get these corners, but I don't. It's easier to do it this way than to try to sew that by hand to get that corner, corner part. Oh, how cute is that? So I probably will iron them before I stuff them. We'll see. And then that'll just get a little whip stitch. And we'll try to just just keep working them until you get them to where you like them. Getting a little bit more of a point here. Doing good. Do this corner. See, that's why I left such a small little area. That's all I'll have to sew. All right, could have I turned that into a book like that? Probably. And that's a little bulky. I'll probably will um, pick on these that are a little bit thicker. This one and this one. Probably trim that just a smidge, especially at the corner. I want to have some. I'm going to do something like this. this last one. Trying to get them where they're filled just about the same thickness. That's harder than you think it would be. <laughs> Alright, here we 
freak out a lot. That's about it. So we'll take this now and try to get it smooshed out into the corners. All right. All the way down to this corner. And we left that corner like that on purpose so that we could get it up in there. Okay, so now. All I have to do is sew this one last seam. It's a little bit harder than a normal fabric because I have that uh, fusing on the back. So that does make it a little bit uh, tougher to get the needle through. But again, I think it will help more than it's hurting right now. So I think we're okay. So I'm doing a hidden whip stitch uh, so that it looks like that when it's done, right? So it's just uh, sewing, taking the two uh, edges, and I'm gonna go inside here and just create a little back and forth stitch uh, just to help it to be as hidden as possible. to knot it off and then I'm going to fluff it to where I can get it from this to this which means getting that fiber fill to go down into the corners I just do one little simple knot like a French knot there pull it pretty tight and then I actually stick it through the seam as far as I can get it into the pillow. And then I'm just going to go around all four sides and see it goes from poofy poofy to this. So then I'm going to take my needle and work on these corners a little bit and these will get fluffed again just the ones that I think need to come out just a little bit and get a little more square there we go just pulls it out just a little bit all right and that's not too bad so we'll give them a good fluffing and they'll be ready for an Easter basket once my fingers aren't sore from the sewing I'll be able to 
beat them a little better. But look how cute those are. I think they came out really cute. So the faux pas was saved. All right, there we go. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, sew sewing tutorial. Uh, if you have any questions, put them down in the in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer. Uh, depending on what kind of sewing machine you have, uh, you can always uh, Google uh, like tips on how to thread your particular sewing machine. I'll give you an idea of what it's like when you have uh, an automatic uh, threader, which is a, a super uh, super nice thing to have, uh, but not necessary uh, to, to get to sewing, right? To, uh, as a beginner sewer, um, I just was gifted this machine, so it was a, was a blessing to me. So again, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I'll do my best to try to help you find an answer. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, like it, share it with your friends. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, would you please consider subscribing? And well, until next time, happy crafting!